So by now, you know how to submit a Lance request. And Lance is a great thing because you can fly to a certain altitude and it takes only a few seconds. Now, sometimes you want to fly higher than what the Lance uh, maximum altitude is. Let's say, for example, a zero grid. There's a bunch of zero grids as you get closer to the airport, and sometimes you want to fly in that area. So I'm going to show you here how you can actually submit a Lance request either in a zero grid, which is the example I'm going to use, or in an area where you need to go above the grid. Now, this is something that you cannot do at the moment with a Lance provider. So if you're used to going with with Kitty Hawk, for example, and submitting your Lance request, then uh, this is not something that you can do. Every single time you're gonna get a denial every time that you do this. So instead, what we have to do is we have to go on the FA website, go on the FA drone zone, and then we're gonna submit. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this. So the first thing that we need to do is actually decide if we want to go where we want to go and, and where the zero grid is located. Well, I'm going to give you an example of one of my favorite places to uh, record footage, which is right here in a zero grid in the airspace from uh, Prescott. You guys know I live in Prescott. So right in this area is where we're going to fly. And I want to fly, there's a, a trail right here. I'm going to zoom in one more time. I'm going to use this. There's a, a trail that intersects right here and splits into two. This is a beautiful area. These, these mountains right here are beautiful rocks. So we're gonna fly in this area. And this is all in a zero grid. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go to the FA drone zone because now I know where I'm gonna fly. I can figure out a bunch of uh, different uh, coordinates from this map. So this is a great place to start. You find that this is a zero grid and you wanna get approval. So let's go to the FA drone zone. Let's go to the login page. If you don't have a login, then you need to create one. I'm gonna log in with mine right now. And uh, as soon as you log in, mine has a part 107 tab. If you are registered under part 107, it's gonna show up right here. So I'm gonna submit this request under part 107. Now this is not something that you can do as a recreational flyer. This is only available flying above grid numbers is only available to part 107 at the moment. So I'm gonna go and scroll down. You can see here it says part 107 waiver and airspace authorization. I'm gonna keep going down. So we click on create part 107 waiver authorization. Now we're not doing a waiver, we're doing a airspace authorization. Not an airspace waiver like we have here, just an airspace authorization. I'm gonna click on start application. And once we get in here, I'm gonna call this point of rocks because this is the name of the place. Uh, and this is not a night flight. I've done night flights there, but I'm gonna do a uh, daylight flight. Point of rocks, daylight. And my name, my information, click next. And once I get to the operation parameters, this is where everything is gonna happen. Now, the date, we're gonna put a start date. Today is May 3rd. I'm gonna give them a week to do this. So I'm gonna fly on May 10th of 2021. End date, you're gonna say, can I pick several days? No, you can't. You have to do one day at a time. Now, if you have the same uh, thing that you have to do several days in a row, then you're gonna have to submit a request for every single day. I wanna do this on sunrise because that's when we have the best color. So I'm gonna do sunrise to noon. Now you can pick whatever you want. Now next, we're gonna go into the frequency right here, weekly, daily, bi-weekly. I'm gonna do this daily. This is only one day. So I'm just gonna click daily. And then here, I'm gonna click my time zone, which is always MST in Arizona. And then it says proposed loc uh, location of the operation. I'm doing this because I want them to feel okay with the fact that I'm gonna be flying in a zero grid zone. And in here, proposed maximum altitude, I'm only gonna request 100 feet and we'll see if they give it to us. Now, degrees, latitude and longitude, and then a radius, a nearest airport, and a class of airspace. We have to fill all this out. Now, let me give you a tip. I'm gonna go back to my map from the FAA, my uh, facility map, and I'm going to use a tool that is available from the, uh, the website in itself. Right here, there's a ruler. I'm gonna click the ruler and I'm gonna pick this middle one right here, which is measuring distances. I'm gonna click right here. Point of rock is actually right here. I'm gonna click this. And then here you can see the distance. A quarter mile around myself, that gives me a radius of a quarter mile like this. That's all I need. So I'm gonna go back to uh, my thing right here and I'm gonna select a radius. I'm gonna do a quarter mile, quarter nautical mile. And then, and I know, by the way, this right here is not nautical miles, I think it's statute miles, but close enough in this case for what I wanna do. Um, in terms of the actual location, now this gets a little bit more tricky. So here, 
I want to fly from this area, from this uh, uh, point right here. If you look in the bottom left corner, you can see the coordinates. 34, 36, 15. 34, 36, 15 north, always in the US. And then the other coordinate is 112, 24, 18. 112, 24, 18. And then we do west. All right, quarter mile nearest airport, KPRC, that's Prescott. It's telling me that is a lance enabled airport, which I know already, but because I'm requesting in a zero grid, I have to do it from here. Click OK. And then kind of airspace, this is a class D airspace. And then here it says, describe your proposed operation. And what I recommend that you talk about is the fact that you're maybe listening to the radio, maybe the fact that uh, you have a pilot license if you have one, uh, maybe just trying to make them feel good. Say that your drone will be um, uh, set up for RTH at uh, 50 feet, maybe. Uh, explain your operation in here. I don't want to do this for you. It is going to change depending on the one. That says, is there a pending or approved waiver or authorization associated with this uh, proposed operation? At the moment, no, there is not. And I'm just going to click next. Here I have the ability to review everything that I have done. I can also make an attachment. Now, if I had a KMZ file, for example, a KML file, I could attach to the application right here. The FAA tells us that they really like having this information right here. So if you have, a, if you have access to a KML or a KMZ file, please submit it to them and they'll be able to open it. And then that's it, you click submit and then it's gonna go. And I'm not gonna do this because this is just a test in this case, but uh, you would click submit and then you'll be all set. Once you submit this, then you have to wait for the FAA to get you the approval. You're gonna get a confirmation email. It does not mean that you're approved just yet. I wanna make that clear. Until you get something from the FAA that says you have been approved, then you can go and fly. It's gonna take a few days. I usually get mine within three or four days, but also this is a small airport and it goes pretty quickly. Give them at least a week, possibly even two weeks if you're flying in a very busy airspace and then they'll let you know what's going on. Now you may get a denial. You may get a, a letter that says this has been denied. I've had airspace requests denied, then I had to resubmit them. Now when that happens, Typically, it's because you didn't give them enough information or maybe you requested to fly too high and they're not comfortable with that. So then you have to go back and ask for maybe a lower altitude. The downside with all this is that they're not going to tell you why they denied you. So you need to kind of figure it out yourself and keep submitting. So do this way ahead of time if this is something that you're gonna be doing uh, on a regular basis. But that's it, that's all I have. Leave the comments, leave uh, any questions you have in the comments down there and then I'll uh, try to help you as much as I can. All right, fly safe. Thank you.